Well, Fresh Bake, there's two kinds of videos we're going to be seeing in the next couple of weeks. It's either going to be a touch of Disney video or what's up with the Disneyland reopening. Tell me more about Disneyland reopening. And that is going to be the subject of our video today. This is our FAQ. We've compiled a list of frequently asked questions. We kind of covered a few of these when the announcement first came out. More information has come to light since then, plus more questions have been asked since then. And we're going to be doing our best to answer those questions for you, coming up next on Fresh Baked. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Fresh Baked. Uh, you've got questions. We've got answers, hopefully. Uh, we're going to do our best to try to give you our best guesses on what's going to be happening uh, with the reopening of Disneyland coming later in April, as we've heard. So let's just get right into it. You've got questions. We've got answers. We'll start with the single most frequently asked questions that we get, uh, apart from, you know, when is it going to open? When is the park going to open? And that is, what will happen with tickets that have already been purchased but not used? Let's say you bought a ticket online or, or at a grocery store or part of a, you know, three-day park hopper kind of deal. Uh, what's going to happen with those unused tickets? And the answer depends on whether or not that ticket has expired. If the ticket has expired, which should be the case for, I would say, a, a vast majority of the, of the outstanding tickets out there, if it has expired, contact Disney and they're going to give you credit for the cost of that ticket towards the purchase of a new ticket. I'm not sure how they do that or at what point in the ticket buying process. Again, I would suggest that you call Disney directly, let them know what, you, you know, what your situation is, and I'm sure that they'll guide you through that with ease. If, though, by chance you do have a ticket that has not expired yet, it's still good. That ticket is still good. But you can't just walk up to the gates, flash your ticket, and they'll let you in. All guests have to go through the reservation process, whether or not you've already paid for your ticket. Again, my assumption would be that uh, during the process of reserving your, your date, uh, you, you are going to give the opportunity to either buy a ticket as part of your reservation process or use a ticket that already exists. They'll probably ask you to scan it or enter the barcode or something to that effect. But somehow, that, you know, that ticket would be applied to that, to that reservation. There will be no tickets sold at the gate. Everyone must go through the reservation process. When they're available, where you get them, or how much they're going to cost is still unknown to anybody at this point. Though I do expect Disney to make some sort of formal announcement in the very near future. My guess would be something like maybe April 1st. It gives them a solid three or four weeks ahead of the opening date. Uh, but that, that, is, that is simply a guess. Where would be the Disneyland website? Not through the Disneyland app, but the Disneyland website. Just like for Touch of Disney, you've got to go through the website proper. I also don't think you're going to be able to make a reservation through the app. Uh, purchases and reservations are going to be handled in one transaction, and that is through the, through the uh, Disneyland website. Other than that, we just got to stay tuned for more details, which luckily, you've got a friend at Fresh Baked who is here to provide just those details. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and to hit the notification bell so that you are kept up to date on what is happening with the Disneyland reopening. Uh, no doubt about it, when something happens, you're gonna hear it from us first when it comes to seeing a video on the topic. And finally, uh, price. I would expect the price to be the same as it was uh, a year ago. I don't expect the price to go down. Even if we're getting less product, the price will not go down. Nor though do I expect the price to go up. Even though this is about the time of year February, March is typically when Disneyland would raise the ticket prices on an annual basis. They've done this for decades. Uh, I don't expect them to do that this year simply because <laughs> that would just be really bad form if they did that. If they opened the parks up and said immediately, here's a ticket increase. So, uh, no, I don't expect prices to go up or down. And, of course, this conversation takes us logically to annual passes, for which there are none. The annual pass program, as of the recording of this video, has been canceled. Now, it will come back. Uh, but as of now, nobody has an annual pass. There are no annual passes. You can't buy an annual pass. You can't use an annual pass. My hunch is that we won't see annual passes again until maybe sometime in 2022. Or at least until there's no limitations on attendance. Uh, or perhaps even maybe just more attendance allowed. Maybe into the 50-60% range. However, having said that, if we paid attention to the previous video we did about the, uh, the sneak peek at the possible new annual pass programs that they're putting together, uh, it sounds like most of them are going to be flex pass style. So, I mean, it may, maybe not 2022. I don't know. We're not ready for it yet. But 
If you're interested in knowing more about what Disney's plans are, if you want to get a, a, you know, a sneak peek at what Disney's plans are, what they're thinking, where their head's at, watch this video uh, where we talk about, we, do, we go through the, uh, the survey that tests guests on what kind of annual pass they might want or prefer amongst a bunch of options. It's a great video. You should check it out. Okay, staying on the annual pass holder thing, there is still such a thing as legacy pass holders. Uh, we got that fancy name for them, but all that is is just benefits. That's not any kind of actual ticket buying ability. The legacy pass holder thing, while it still does exist, is just for benefits like getting your picture taken with WandaVision or, I don't know, a, a special treat at, uh, at Black Tap or something like that in downtown Disney. Okay, switching gears. Perhaps the most controversial item from the update that we got from the state of California was the mention of California guests only. A lot of people have questions on how that would actually work. Personally, I noted in the article that I read, the first article that I read about this uh, from KTLA was that they used the words should, that theme parks should allow only residents in the state of California to attend. Others reported that it was a, that it was a requirement, that it was a fact. Now, the published guidelines do state California residents only, and then it referenced uh, a, a state travel advisory. But when you look at the actual travel advisory that they reference, even in that document, it uses the same word, should. Meanwhile, this is where things get even more confusing, no such limitations were placed on people buying tickets for Touch of Disney. Literally, this, I mean, the, so it, it, it begs the question, how is that possible? How can they make no requirements for Touch of Disney Anybody can go from in-state, out-of-state, wherever, uh, but, but say I have those requirements for, for Disneyland. There's literally no difference between going to the two other than rides are open, and that's it pretty much. But really, honestly, can, how do you logically make that the, the, uh, the difference between the two? You can't. Uh, going to Touch of Disney and going to Disneyland are exactly the same thing. So that's a very good question. But having said that, Disney can still choose on their own to sell tickets only to California residents. Okay, parks are opening end of April, but what about hotels? Well, again, we don't know. We don't know the answer to that at all. Disneyland hasn't said anything, uh, but I suspect that uh, the, the, the on-site hotels, the resort hotels, will be open, if not on opening day, shortly thereafter. As for, you know, the, the outside hotels, the hotels on Harbor, the Good Neighbor Hotels, uh, those are all independent operations. They're all their own businesses, and they, and they make their own business decisions. Uh, if you have one that you favor... If there's a specific hotel that you like, call them up directly uh, and ask them, are you open? Because some are, you know, some have been closed, but some have been open this whole time. So, you know, you don't know. You got to call them direct. Now, along with Disneyland, DCA will be opening also end of April. But one thing that Chapek was sure to comment on at the shareholders meeting was that Avengers Campus would not, underline boldface, not be opening with California Adventure. They had said, as a matter of fact, a couple months ago that they expected Avengers Campus to be open in the summer of 2021 before any of this started. And my suspicion is that they're sticking with that date. I'm not certain why that is, uh, though my suspicion is that they're probably just not ready. But then uh, all indications are that they are done. Um, I, I don't see them still, having, still working on that land at all. Now, there is the possibility that Disney wants to hold off opening Avengers Campus until they're able to properly hype it up. Because, I mean, I, would, I guess I would have to agree that uh, just opening up Avengers Campus with the rest of the park on opening day feels a bit like a dud. There's no premiere component to it. It doesn't feel like it's being premiered. Ta-da! Here's Avengers Campus. It's just open with the rest. So they may just be holding out. That's a couple months, though. July, you know, you're looking at July, August. Uh, which could be, you know, that's, that's a few months. Uh, and also, I would say this, if they're looking to get more guests in the land, uh, I, don't, I don't see, because what the best case scenario, we get to Orange by summer. That's another 5,000 guests in the park. I mean, that, I don't, that doesn't really make or break attendance at Avengers Campus. Uh, again, I, I, I think if they're using that kind of logic, it, it's most likely more because they want to separate it as an event outside of the normal opening of California Adventure in uh, end of April. Okay, got lots of questions in the comments and in live streams about the rides. What kind of rides will be open? Uh, short story, all of them. 
I would that includes indoor rides. Uh, there are a couple exceptions that that are a little on the fence. Finding Nemo, I don't expect Finding Nemo to ever open up again. Now, there were no mentions of rides in the guidelines, which actually in and of itself is a good sign. Uh, it tells me that they that it's just part of the opening of the park. Some suggested that the reference to time limits on indoor, well, actually it doesn't, indoor what exactly? Because it just says indoor activity. But the thought was that this might have been intended for rides, which if so is still good news because it also means that they'll be open just with restrictions, which, by the way, should come as no surprise to any of us. Now, some have mentioned that, uh, no, Dave, there are references to attractions in the guidelines. There, it says outdoor attractions only in the orange tier. Now, I believe those people who are referencing that are misreading the guidelines because the, the guidelines are broken up into, you know, the color-coded tiers, but then also into two sections. There's the what was and the what is. There's the, there's the current policy and then there's a policy as of April 1st, or actually this Sunday, if you saw our other video on that, they've moved things up already. But as of April 1st, it's the lower set of, of guidelines that are, that are uh, you know, people are supposed to follow. And those guidelines, the lower set, make no reference at all to attractions. Only the top guidelines did, the previous guidelines. All right, so let's talk about those rides and how they're going to be set up. And all you need to do to know more about how they're going to be set up is to look and see what they've been doing at Walt Disney World. Uh, very limited guests and vehicles, uh, something like, like a, in a Fantasyland dark ride, one party per vehicle, though that's not really a big deal because they hardly ever, you know, filled all the seats on Fantasyland dark ride. Uh, something like Pirates or Small World or Indiana Jones, where you have multiple rows, I would say probably no more than one party per car or perhaps one party per two rows. So you'll have a party uh, filling up one row and then an empty seat or a row, and then another party behind that. Uh, I, I definitely don't expect anything more than two rows, but it's very possible that they might just start off at the very beginning of one party per vehicle, no matter how big that thing is, a Pirates, Caribbean boat, or what have you. Uh, I know they were doing that for Rise of the Resistance, although that has fewer seats, uh, but Rise was one party per vehicle when they first opened up. Speaking of Rise of the Resistance, I'll mention this here. I do expect them to continue using the boarding pass system. Some have thought that maybe they wouldn't because capacity would be limited. You know, there'd be fewer people, but there's also fewer seats available. So it's, a, it's, a, it's pretty much a one-for-one -one ratio in that sense. Fewer people, but fewer seats. Therefore, the same amount of supply and demand exists uh, for Rise of the Resistance. And we know that this was the case at Walt Disney World. Uh, at Hollywood Studios, um, they've been using the reservation system, or I should say the boarding pass system, since the, the park reopened. But really, like I said, I, I think that all protocols that we've seen them use in uh, Walt Disney World will be applied in Disneyland. I, I don't see any reason for them to, to suddenly try to reinvent that system. Uh, it seems to be working just fine at Disney World, so I would expect them to use that here. Uh, okay, there will be no tram. Everybody walks. There will likely also be no access to the monorail from downtown Disney. Some people actually use that as an entrance. You would, you would get your ticket scanned at the monorail entrance in downtown Disney, ride that into Tomorrowland. Uh, I don't expect them to do that. I don't know if this is a fact. This is just an assumption. Considering everything else that we know of what their, what their plans are, it makes no sense for them to open up the monorail entrance. But like I said, that's just a guess. If you're wondering how they're going to handle things like the Haunted Mansion stretching room, or Jungle Cruise seats, or anything where people kind of, you know, just commute or, or stand by and wait. Uh, X's. Think marks on the ground, marks in the seats telling you where to sit or where to stand. Stand here, but don't stand there. Uh, fast passes. There won't be any. Uh, by extension, there also won't be any Max Pass. At least that's been the case at Walt Disney World. Uh, also, no single rider, which, if you understand the logic, single rider was designed to fill up all the empty seats so that, that, so that every vehicle that went out was full. Uh, but since the actual plan is to have empty seats, they, they want empty seats now in these ride vehicles. There is no purpose for single rider. Having said that, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. I don't think that anybody's going to be having a diff any difficulty, except for maybe Rise of the Resistance, uh, having any difficulty getting on a, a ride. Okay, speaking of capacity limits, let's refresh that conversation. 15% in the red tier, 25% in the orange tier, 35% in the yellow tier. Uh, for Disneyland, which has a max capacity of 80,000, 15% means 12,000 guests. Meanwhile, over at DCA with a max capacity of 50,000, that means 7,500 total guests. 
Uh, if we move to the orange tier, that would be 20,000 guests uh, at 25% for Disneyland and 12,500 guests at DCA. And then finally, yellow tier, 28,000 guests at Disneyland and 17,500 guests at DCA. Uh, as mentioned in our previous video on the topic, we do not expect any fireworks, any parades, World of Color, Fantasmic, or anything like that. Uh, you might see some pop-up shows like Dapper Dan's, but they'll be, you know, set aside from the rest of guests. Also, no character meet and greets. You might be able to see a character in the park, but they're going to be also set, you know, up on a balcony or in a vehicle or somewhere where you can't actually make contact with that guest. Okay, let's talk about dining. Uh, much like the rides, uh, we are looking at similar capacities as uh, are being led into the park, be meaning if it's 15% capacity for the park, you look for 15% capacity inside uh, a restaurant. And this actually could be what the time limits, you know, we're talking about in those guidelines when they were saying 50% uh, capacity with time limits, they could be talking about indoor dining, meaning they don't want you just sitting in there for an hour or more. You get in there, you eat, and then you leave. That makes more sense than a time limit on a, on a ride, <laughs> for sure. Uh, so th that's possible. It could, be, it could be either one. It could be both. They could be talking about both you know, or any kind of indoor activity. To not make a distinction between an indoor restaurant or an indoor ride. Any kind of indoor activity, 15% time limit. Okay, we got a few questions about the After Dark event. I'm not sure actually how many events there are where they had actually sold tickets but haven't actually held the event. The only one that, I, that comes to mind was the Star Wars event. That was, that was one where they sold tickets but they never got to hold the event. And note I said that rather than saying canceled, the event was never actually formally canceled. No refunds have been given as far as I understand, which means your ticket is still good. Of course, if you can't go now because, you know, they, they postponed it or whatever, or if you can't go or you don't want to go, Call Disney directly. They'll give you a refund if you haven't already. But if you don't, hang on to it because the Star Wars event, the After Dark event will come back. And when that time does, you're going to want that ticket because those are, are pretty hard to come by. Uh, and that's almost like a guaranteed spot. So you don't have to run that risk. So if, you, if you're on the fence, think about keeping it because you can still get a refund whenever you want, I think. Uh, I don't think those expire per se. Uh, yeah, so you can still use those tickets if or when. Uh, the After Dark events come back. Speaking of special events, and I don't know this for certain, I just have a feeling we're not going to see Oogie Boogie Bash this year. If we had more time, maybe, but I feel like, what, with, I mean, it's, it's going to be six months from now that they would normally be having that event? From now, uh, five months from the time they open the park. That, I, don't I just feel like they're still going to be in that sort of, that period where they're trying to figure out how the park's operating, and you don't want to throw in a monkey wrench like an after, an after hours party. Halloween party. Uh, so I have a feel next year. I have a feeling Oogie Boogie Bash won't be back till next year. And possibly those after dark events as well. And lastly, in case you're wondering, not a single peep so far, at least that I've heard, from either Knott's Berry Farm or Universal Studios Hollywood. Knott's, of course, has their Taste of Boys and Berry Festival going on right now, uh, but they haven't said anything about what they're going to do after that, though my suspicion is as soon as that course or that event runs its course, much like Disney, they'll open up the park. Nothing at all, though, from Universal. Again, uh, I expect they're going to let their, their event run and then open the park. And I think that covers most of the questions asked. Of course, if you have one and you want to ask me, let us know in the comments below. We're also quite likely to get more answers from Disney uh, between now and, I don't know, the next week or two. In fact, I think lots of it. So, like I said before, it's a very good reason for you to be subscribed to our channel and to pay attention to what's being put out, what we're publishing on a regular basis here at Fresh Baked. Turn on your notifications. Turn on your notifications so you know when we post a video. We post one almost every day, pretty much like five times a week. Uh, so turn on the notifications and keep an eye out for any news information that comes up. Uh, you're gonna hear it from us first because that's what we do. We bake it fresh daily. <laughs> so again, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. Like I said, if you have more questions, be, uh, do feel free to, to let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, be safe out there, everybody. Stay vigilant. Be kind to one another. Know that we love you. And fresh baked.